Ladies and gentlemen, round nine. It is in the books. Toronto. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> Big shakeups. A lot to talk about. Yeah, so. heading into round 10 in Daytona. My favorite race of the year. But before we get to that, we're going to have our little race recap, talk about results. Some things stay the same. Something's changed. Yes, they Big did. Big surprises. All so. right, and then you will hit us with some stats, so let's get to it. Dude, a couple of results were expected. Tomac and Dunge, first and second, Almost but given. another shakeup. How'd you do with that? I got Reed in there. Didn't get him in the right spot, but Brock okay. Tickle, I mean, that was the big surprise of the weekend. I'm sure a lot of people didn't I get that I gotta give him right. kudos. I mean... Got the third place start and held there. It was crazy. And he gave us some entertainment with Barsha. I yeah, like I mean, that, that was, was actually awesome. pretty good. <laughs> all right. So. I did all right. I got two picks right. Baggett and Seeley, if they had a flip-flop, that would have got four Keeping picks Keeping it close. Right. I mean, Dude. that's how close it is every oh, week. Oh, I was so. on my toes. Well, how about some stats for the week? What do we got? Um, we crunched the numbers, and the average score was 34 points, no perfect scores, and 9% got the wild card, which is a little down from normal. Okay. But only 32 people had the top five in their top five in some sort of order, and 50% of the picks placed had Tomac to win. So. Well, yeah, fourth win of the season. It's People have faith in him. I think we do too. The Tomac so. train is a rolling. Yeah, there's just nothing stopping it, I don't think. All right. We still have some injured riders. Pike's still out. Webb announced he is not going to be here for Daytona, so mm -hmm. do not put him in your picks. Kennard didn't line up at the gate. Crashed last week in practice. So, not sure. Didn't Check. Make it. Yeah, not Watch sure about him. that. And then, dude, it hurts. I still have not seen anything on James Bubba Stewart. Where is he at this point? I, Where are you, James? I hope he makes it back at some point. I, mean, I want to know what you guys think. Does Stewart show up unannounced at Daytona? Hopefully. I hope so. Because nope. it just doesn't feel the same without It doesn't. Him. I mean, give us a little bit of Bubba. So. <laughs> All right. Now, we're heading into Daytona. Big race. Big race. Lots to talk about. Some cool history with this track. So let's get into it with our track trends. All right, heading into historic Daytona. Um, it's kind of cool. It's the host of the first ever Supercross in 1974, and it's been part of the series in all 44 seasons. So 44 years, really. A lot of history there. Did not um, know that. Kawasaki's won the last six out of ten races there, even going back to 2007 with James Stewart. So Just watch out for Tomac. Might want to continue that. All right, Green um, Machine. And the forecast when we checked it said it might rain. So Yeah, I looked. It was kind of a low percentage, but check it out. If Low percentage does, in Florida probably means monsoon. Yeah, and mud racing, there's definite riders that could do better in that. Do so. excel in that. Okay. For it. Now with the track, did you look to see the track map? Yeah, it was it's interesting. A cool looking track. Yeah. Two sets of whoops, lots of cool different variations. Mm -hmm. And the nice part about it this year is it doesn't look like the start's just going to dictate who's going to win. No. Last year it was just like ants marching single filed line the whole way through. This nope. year, I think it's going to be a really good race. I, I think guys that are good outdoors are going to oh, have a really good race this year. And the timing might come into play where those laps are so long. Yeah. So we'll see what it does. And for you guys out there that aren't really too familiar with Daytona, it's more of an outdoor style track, but they call it Supercross. So guys that excel in outdoors, because this is going to be the roughest, ruddiest track you're going to see all year. So that is something you definitely want to consider mm -hmm. when you are making your picks. Absolutely. So next up, we got to do the points battle because I'm excited for this one. <laughs> yep. All right, let's do it. Dude. First and second. We're only talking about two guys this week for points battle, yep. Dunge and That's Tomac. Right. Now the question is, well, actually first, let's do some simple math here, folks. We got eight rounds left. Mm -hmm. The difference between first and second place is three points. Mm -hmm. So if they went one, two, Tomac went first every race, which if you're, if you're in Vegas, the you probability ain't going to happen, yeah. right? It's just but putting it in perspective what he has to do. If Tomac wins out for the rest of the year and Dunge gets second every race, they are tied after Vegas. Yeah. Winner goes to the guy with the most win races, which, yep. which would be Tomac, right? So the question is, who's got more pressure at this point? I still think it's Tomac. I mean, he's on a roll. He's won, what, four out of the last five races or took first and second there. But, yeah. I mean, 24 points, that's still a lot of points if you're behind Dungey. If you're behind anyone else, maybe a little more likely. But Dungey, best start. He hasn't finished worse than fourth all year. I mean... Yeah, it's, it's got to just. So you think Tomac's got more? That's got to add a ton of pressure because, it's like you said last week, he comes out clean no matter what. Anderson yeah. gets his spokes taken out. That, that stuff doesn't happen to Dungey. So <laughs> it's true. However, I'm going to disagree with you. Okay. I think Dunge is feeling the pressure from Tomac because Tomac's going out there and he's like, "I got nothing else better to do but go win races." Yeah. Tomac doesn't when he's he's already proven that if he gets a good start. Oh, he's at, he's when it comes down to just raw speed, nobody's going to catch Tomac mm -hmm. at this point. So Dungey knows 
that he has to beat Tomac. He can't afford to let Tomac finish ahead of him. It, it, it all can. depends on could Tomac get the starts. Is Dungy banking on just one bad round where he I, can put it away? But so. one bad round could happen to Dungy. I think Dungy mm-hmm. has a lot more to lose because he's seen the points gap shrink. Tomac, he's got nothing to lose. Oh, he hasn't really caught Tomac at all. So. No. So what, what do you guys think? Who's feeling the pressure more? Is Dungy more pressured to stay ahead of Tomac? Is he more stressed out about that? Or is Tomac just like, holy crap, stressed out because he knows he pretty much has to win out at this point? Oh, yeah. So there's a lot of pressure. And also, I want to know, Dungy, well, another good point to bring up is he can't play it safe. No, he's he's. There's no stay more there. settling for third. Like, there's no more third was good enough for if tonight. Tomac's in first, I don't see him settling no, in fourth. he's going to have so. to push it. Mm-hmm. So interesting. So it's going to be a good championship. I... Oh, man, I want to come down to Vegas so bad. <laughs> I do too. So. Now, but with that in mind, so we've seen a lot of shakeups, though. We've had a lot of riders break in the top five. That's like, who is this guy? Like, yeah. Tickle last week. You, if you the were at a point in the season coming. where you need to make up points, it's proven by this point you can't. there are no safe bets. Tomac mm-hmm. and Dungy, okay. But the rest, those other three positions, there are no safe bets no. anymore. So Especially going into Daytona. Yeah. That track could do a lot of things. So. so weekly spoilers is probably the most important category, and that's oh. what we're going to cover next. Talk about guys that could break into the top five. All right, so I was part of the ones that had Anderson in my top five last week. Pretty sure you well, were. Well, we said too. he was the best bet for fourth, yeah, and that I mean, blew up in our face. Just goes to show you. However, I think he was in fourth. He started in fourth. He was yeah, in fourth. He was in fourth. And got his spokes blown up. He got freeze raid. Yep, had to pull over, get a new front wheel. So that was a big bummer, but don't be thrown off by his uh, finish his result, last week. Yeah. Yeah, he's still up there. Okay. Um, another rider, Blake, the beast of the East, Baggett. Killing it right I now. mean, his average finish on the West, 12.5, has gone down to 5.6 on the East. He crashed twice last week and got still fifth place. Fifth. I mean, he was up there just flying, so he's definitely one I'm going to be watching. And it's like it's been said, if, if there's one race, he's going to win. El Chupa Cabra. Yeah, this is the one. Okay. This is Track has his name all over it. So okay. the podium there in 2015 too. So and another rider, Marvin Muskin. He's gonna be talked about. I had him up there last week. Lost points. Well, I had the out, flu. Got sick. Turned out he was sick. Something like that. But he had his worst qualifying session that week, and then his worst result. So watch out for him. Make sure he's feeling and he's not sick or anything. But okay. Other than that, he he has podiumed. In Daytona, he did it last year. So Right, okay. And then who's some other riders you got? Well, look, I can't deny that Brock Tickle is on the gas last week. He got good starts the whole night. I think if Tickle can have good starts, I think putting him up near the top five. And you got to keep in mind, last year outdoors, Tickle was making podiums at the end of the year. So he has that raw speed on a rough track. Yep. My other one is Cole Seeley. He's got fantasy points every round. He's been in some sort of fantasy spot. That's true. The hard part is, and we talked about this earlier, is he has a much worse finishing average finish on the east. It's already showing. On the west, and it's proven to be true. Because since leaving the west coast, he has not done as well. However, he's still a good bet to put in your top five. And my last one, Mr. Got It Done last week, Chad Reed. Father time. He doesn't care. Father time. He wants to be that guy to get the win at the oldest age ever, so... I, I, it's hard to count him out, especially down there. I still have Reed to possibly win a race this year. I Am hope I going to do it? Eh, but I still his it home race. So. He's won Daytona before. He likes Daytona. He's from Florida. Yeah. So I think putting Reed in your top five this week is not a bad bet to take at all. So those are our weekly spoilers. Who do you guys think? Now, I want to know, though, too, who is the next rider who has not broken the top five? Who can do it? Who can do it? Besides what we've seen already, because we've proven that Brock Tickle did it, Mm -hmm. you never know. So who is the next one to break into the top five? And now coming up this week, 12th place is the wild card, and that's what we got to talk about next. All right, man, so my wild card pick this week, I'm going with the gut. (laughs) Okay. Because there's no no statistics that I'm going off of with this one. Where is it leading you? (laughs) I'm going to get freeze raid this week. (laughs) Vince Free, we haven't, no one's talked about him. Mr. Controversy himself. So Vince is a guy that gets really good starts, Yep. but then we'll just fade back. Far back. Out of the top ten. I mean, he's usually in some kind of skirmish, some kind of drama. He'll take somebody out, and then he'll fade back, which is okay. A little bit of excitement. But he's always there. He is. He's always in the main. No matter what, the Duke could finish dead last. He's going to get talked about in the main event. Yep. So I've got Freeze Ray for 12th, because I I see him getting a good start, kind of fading back and settling in that 12th to 14th happen. range, so I'm gonna take a I'm gonna take a gamble, go with freeze. What okay. do you got? 
Um, this one I really thought about, where 12th is you know a big range. So okay. I looked up the wild card stats on the season this far, and only one rider has had a worse qualifying spot than the wild card spot and taken the wild card spot. So that means, on average, whoever's qualifying 2.2 spots behind the wild card spot has taken the wild card. You just slapped me in the face with some stats, and yeah, so make sense of it for me. I dug, I dug into it. If wild card's 12th, whoever's qualifying around 14, 15th, it's gonna on average, 12? should hit about 12. Okay. So with that in mind, I have a couple riders that you know I'm, I'm thinking of: Josh Grant, Justin Brayton, Dean Wilson, and Justin Bogle. So. They're the ones I'm going to be watching when qualifying comes out. Oh, but also yeah. remember, out of nine rounds, the person who's qualified in the wild card spot has only taken that spot twice. So, dude, if you get wild card correctly, based off your stat you just I'm, gave, I might have cracked into the matrix or something. You did it, dude. You, you saw it. Catch me in Vegas at the end of the year <laughs> if it does. But all um, right. So those are our wild card picks. I'm going with my gut. Stat man Christian here. He's got I a different theory. It. I think he, I think I he thinks he out. cracked the code. So we'll see if that worked. <laughs> But next up, dude, you know what time it is. It's time to lock them in. All right. Before we lock them in, I've got some redemption I need to take care of here. You guys noticed last week. A couple weeks ago, a it couple was bad. Ago, I had a half beard on my face. I mean, that's when fantasy gets real. I got my butt kicked. So let's do it again because I want redemption. If I win this weekend, I want to see those hot pink fingernails. Hot pink fingernail polish. Okay. If I lose... Unibrow. Painted unibrow. Painted unibrow, folks, all the Entire way across. Entire show. I got that. Okay. Are you ready? Let's hear him. I'm going to take a risk this week. Okay. El Chupacabra. The beast of the east. The beast of the east, Mr. Blake Baggett. Just keeps improving. He's winning, dude. Yeah, if he, it's any race. I, I, he's going to do it. If it's any race, it's going to be Daytona. I mean, even with his strong results, he's a good pick there. So Blake, don't let me down. Yeah, well, I, well, we'll see how he does. Tomac in second. Dungey in third. Safe, safe. Anderson, Come back. still fourth. It's almost like a bye week for him last yeah. week. He got some rest. And Reed, I've got him in fifth. And, dude, I've got Freeze Ray in my wild card. Okay. What do you got? I got, it's kind of like clockwork orange I got going here. I got a lot of orange in my picks. Um, I'm still going with Eli Tomac to win. Dungey second. Beast of the East, Blake Baggett in third. Okay. Hopefully he can put it on two wheels and stay upright. And Muskin in fourth. If he's healthy, if he's having bad qualifying, can't I might change move him it. Out. I might what? Move him out. No, you can't change I might it. Move him out. No, Let's see how it I don't goes. care if he qualifies 18th, dude. You're <laughs> keeping him there. Okay, unless it's really bad. But what's really then, no? Only if he gets hurt and can't line up. We established this rule. You cannot change your. So picks. Muskin, if you're feeling sick, just take one for the team for me there and <laughs> just sit it lie. out for me. But I, I'm hoping he's better. Okay, um, Anderson. Back up to fifth, and my wild card, Justin Bogle. So. Can't believe you try and back out like that, dude. <laughs> I mean, we've got to see how he is. No, you, you lock him I in. I don't want to pull this a Millsaps. This isn't lock him in with a fail save. It says lock him in. <laughs> I don't want to do what you did with Millsaps no. that week. We you saw swallow, how that ended. You swallow the key after you lock him in. <laughs> okay, well, All right. we'll see how it looks. You guys have seen our picks, so make sure to join and play with us. Go to Team RMA TVMC on the Fancy SX website. You can play with us. You can see our picks. You can make fun of us if you want. You can talk about yeah, it. We want to hear all about that. And give us your over-under on who you think is going to win on their picks this you guys, week. So. Does El Chupacabra have what it takes? I want to know how many of you guys are jumping on that train with me this week. I feel kind of bad letting Tom that go, but you got to take risks at this point. I mean, you can't win every race, so I don't know. Yeah. Anyway, well, we got some good prizes, as always, to give away, so let's get into our prize recap. Okay. Dude, got some good prizes again. It's never too late to win them, so... What do we First got? First place, Bell Motor 9 Carbon Flex with MX versus ATV Supercross Encore game. Mm -hmm. We play that every week because we want to see the track. Test the track out, yeah. Okay. TCX Comp Evo Michelin boots, two sets of Pirelli MX32 Scorpion tires. Those things are rad. Yep. What Good else stuff we got? coming from Stellar MX, uh, EVS, Acherbys, Galfer, Pro Honda, ODI, and Scott Prospect Goggles. So what? check all that out. You have seen it. Those are the top 10 weekly prizes. And don't forget, I say it every week, I'm going to say it again. It does not matter if you have not been playing or if you got a late start or if you missed a round. Top 10 weekly prizes go to anybody that signs up to play for this round and this round only. So make sure, get your picks in. Go to our website, rmfantasysx.com. Get your picks in if you don't want to play. I've got a how-to video. I show you how step-by-step -step it is easy. And best of all, it's free. Yep. So if you haven't played, get on it. Yep. I am Chase. I'm Christian. We'll see you next time.